The aim of this lecture is to provide an understanding of the hazards and controls involving food pests and to provide an understanding of integrated pest management. Learning outcomes, by the end of this module, you should be able to say why staff training is important to recognise and respond to signs of pests, give reasons for the control of pests, state why using competent contractors are required for chemical control, and lastly identify which is the preferred option for the control of pests. Pests are defined as animals, insects or birds which live in or on humans' food and are noxious, destructive and troublesome. And these include rodents, such as the brown rat, Rattus norvegicus, the black rat, Rattus ratus, and the house mouse, Moose domesticus. We mustn't forget either birds, dogs and cats, and that includes domestic birds also. And the different types of insects that are regarded as pests include flies, such as the common garden housefly, blue bottle, green bottle, wasps, cockroaches, the oriental and the German types, soakids, stored product insects such as grain beetle, flower beetle, larder beetle, grain weevil, mill moth and flower moth, and also mites, pharaoh's ant and silverfish. Why do we need to control pests? Well, firstly, to prevent disease. Rodents, for example, carry such disease as Salmonella, Typhoid, E. coli 0157, Leptospirosis or Viles disease, which is carried in its rat's urine, Cholera, and Trichinella and other parasites. With insects, they carry such things as Salmonella, E. coli 0157, and Dysentery. To prevent contamination, both bacterial and physical, Physical could include such things as with rodents, droppings, bodies and feet, urine, saliva, hairs and nesting material. With insects it could include such things as droppings from flies and cockroaches, bodies and feet, pupae, larvae and eggs, regurgitation from flies and webbing from moths. Also contaminants from birds can include feathers, nests and mites and droppings. Food wastage due to contaminants, spillage and consumption. Damage, gnawing of pipes, cables which could cause flooding, fires, gas leaks. Also structural damage to the foundations and drains. Lost custom, complaints, staff losses. And all these affect profits. And under the regulation EC 852-2004, Windows that can be opened must, where necessary, be fitted with insect-proof screens, which can easily be removed for cleaning. Legislation that covers pests include the Food Hygiene England Regulations 2006, Sale of Unfit and Unsatisfactory Food, and the Prevention of Damage by Pests Act 1949. Integrated pest management is the cost-effective implementation of prevention and eradication strategies based on the biology of pests, intended to ensure a pest-free food operation. Emphasis is placed on non-toxic solutions and least toxic treatments. It consists of environmental control, preventing and denying access, by good design, minimizing cavities and voids in the building, traps to the drainage system, provision of lobbies, keeping windows and doors closed where appropriate, check and deliveries, reducing harborage, Clearing surrounding vegetation, which could be breeding sites. Proofing and maintenance, including proofing of windows using fly screens and proofing of doors and eaves. Replacing broken windows. Maintaining all drains and water taps in good order. Using self-closing devices on doors. The use of plastic strips and air curtains. Improvement of structural premises. Fixing defective roofs. Pipes removed from walls and holes around pipes well maintained and filled in. Gaps under doors, now this could be remedied by using brush strips and the use of kick plates then to prevent rodents from gnawing at the bottom of the doors and report any maintenance defects to your supervisor. Deny pests, food and harbourage by good housekeeping both internally and externally. 
Premises and refuse areas should be kept clean, food covered where appropriate, an effective stock rotation policy, clean as you go, food not left outside, food stored off the floor and away from walls, pests are denied favourable conditions, the use of pest proof containers where appropriate, regular audits, staff alert and well trained. Staff should be trained to recognise pests and signs of pest activity and they need to advise the supervisor of poor housekeeping or remedy themselves. Report pests and signs of pests to the supervisor immediately. Any surfaces on which rodents may have walked should be disinfected before use. Any contaminated food should be segregated and disposed of. There are two ways in which we can control pests. The first way is by physical control and the second method is by chemical control. With physical control, the pest is caught either dead or alive and this is preferred to poisons and includes things like electric fly killers, sticky papers, but you must take care in sighting of the electric fly killers. They must be regularly emptied and the tube, the ultraviolet tube, must be changed at least annually. Also cockroach monitoring traps, rodent traps, catch them live or dead, and it's useful for monitoring. The use of hormone or pheromone traps for moths and wasps and the use of bird mist nets. Do not encourage pests by feeding birds or other animals. Chemical control, the second way in which we control pests, the use of rodenticides for rodents and the use of insecticides for insects. Rodenticides come in the form of solid blocks, paste, bait and powders and narcotizing. Insecticides come in the guise of noctone or residual to break the life cycle such as dusts, baits, gels and sprays, and also fumigation. Always, when using chemical control, always use a reputable pest control contractor. The use of pest control contractors does not absolve managers from the responsibility of keeping premises pest-free. There is a risk of contamination from the dead pest ending up in the food, especially if you use chemical control, and pesticides themselves ended up in the food as contamination and the problem again has got these rodents dying in accessible places so by catching them by physical means i.e I. alive or dead at least we know where they are we don't know where they're going to end up when we're using pesticides food which is contaminated must be immediately segregated and or destroyed and here are a couple of pictures of rodents the one in the top left hand corner is the common brown rat, Ratus norvegicus, and there are about 75 million brown rats in the UK at any one time. You are never more than 3 metres from a brown rat at any one time either. The next picture down is the black rat, or Ratus ratus. You tend to find these in areas such as seaside resorts, near ships, etc. And the bottom picture is the domestic mouse or moose domesticus, house mouse. The picture in the middle top there, that's a rat smear. That's where a rat is brushed against a wall and because a rat has got a very high oil and fat content in its fur and skin, it leaves a mark on a wall and the mark itself is full of disease. And just to the right you can see the sort of damage that uh, a rat can do by gnawing at electrical plug and possibly causing fires both at in a domestic premises and a catering premises. Rodents, especially rats because of where they live, spread such diseases as Salmonella, E. coli, Typhoid, Typhus, Clostridium, Trichinosis and Leptospirosis or Vowles disease which it carries in its urine. You can imagine because if a rat le lives in sewers it's amongst all the sewage and the faeces and is responsible for a lot of disease. Transmission methods include consumption of food contaminated by rodent urine or drop-ins, contact with rat urine itself, virus disease, eating undercooked pork, trichinella parasite, parasites which live on rats are a problem, and rat bites. Identification signs of infestation include such things as drop-ins, bodies, sightings, smell or noise, Holes and nests, food loss, 
Nord food, food package in our structure, smears, fur and footprints, tail marks, etc. And treatment for rodents include the use of rodenticides, perhaps using a chronic rodenticide, which is multiple feed, and these include anticoagulants such as warfarin. Acute rodenticides, and that's usually by a single feed, is also toxic to humans. An example is alpha chlorolose. Contact dust or gel, which includes such things as bromodialone, the use of tracking powder, traps and rodent sticky boards. And here's an example of different types of insects. Top left hand picture there is a cockroach, that's the German cockroach. The other one, which is the smaller one, is the oriental cockroach. Then you've got flies, the next one down, and wasps in the bottom left hand side. Just to the right of wasps, you've got soakids, or little uh, paper lice. To the right of the soakids, you've got a pharaoh's ant, and in the right hand corner, you've got a fire brat. Just above the fire brat, you've got fly pupae, and in the middle, just to the left of fly pupae, you've got maggots and casters, which are the pupae of the maggots and the fly. Insects as well as rodents spread disease such as Salmonella, Typhoid, Shigella, E. coli, Clostridium and other food poisoning and foodborne organisms. Flies, as an example, their methods of contamination include the regurgitation of their stomach contents, faeces, bacteria from their feet, hairs on body and legs, pupil cases, eggs, larvae and dead bodies. Treatment and prevention include good housekeeping, proofing, the use of lobbies, self-closing doors, covering refuse and areas clean and tidy, the use of electric fly killers with care taken when sighting, the use of sticky fly papers but not in public areas, and insecticides used with appropriate care. With cockroaches, the methods of contamination there are bodies, dead or alive, their faeces, mouth parts, egg cases, nymphal moats, contamination of food contact surfaces after visiting sewers and refuse material. Again, treatment and prevention, good housekeeping, check goods on arrival, sound building structure, seal crevices, particular care with pipes through walls, keeping drains and gullies clean, the use of cockroach traps for detection, the use of specific residual insecticides, the use of contact dusts and gels, and examination of roof voids, cellars, etc. regularly. So just to reiterate generally how we can prevent insects causing a problem with food premises, good housekeeping practices, good proofing methods, checking goods upon delivery, good maintenance, keeping clean and tidy refuse areas, and keeping drains and gullies clean. Here are some examples of stored product insects, or SPI. The picture on the left hand side is the flower moth, or rather the pupae from the flower moth. The next one is the grain weevil, which you will find in all domestic flower. And with domestic flower, several years ago, flower used to be milled, used to be filtered, and used to be blasted through with chlorine to kill all bacteria, eggs, insects, pests, and to whiten it. But now that last stage of chlorination, it doesn't occur in the process. So once the flour is milled and sifted and filtered, it's put into bags along with all bacteria, spores, eggs from pests such as a grain weevil. And as an example, if you were to leave a, a bag of flour in a warm room for about five or six days untouched, and if you open the bag, you will see these uh, weevils crawling through the flour. So that's the green weevil, and next to that is the rust red flower beetle, which you'll also find in domestic flower. Stored product insects then are a large group of insects which attack foodstuffs, and they include beetles, weevils, moths, mites, and their larvae. The foods they affect include cereals, flour, which I've already mentioned, beans, and dried products. The insects do not have any direct health significance, but they do cause great economic loss. Infestations are often difficult to detect, 
and many are nocturnal. Signs of infestation vary with the insect and they can include such things as strands of webbing from the flower moth, holes in food from the biscuit beetle, frass from the larder beetle and grain weevil, trails in dust from the confused flower beetle and bodies. Treatment is varied and it depends on the type of insect, the source of infestation, the size of the infestation and the location. And you need to contact a specialist pest control company if you are going to use chemical methods. Such things as fumigation of food or warehouse, using methyl bromide, using specific insecticides with great care, and all food must be destroyed. And the last pest we're going to look at are birds, such as sparrows, pigeons and starlings. Not to forget about seagulls as well in seaside areas. Well, they can be a, a great problem uh, with, with a lot of faeces that they deposit contain a lot of disease. And other specific reasons for bird control include the contamination from feathers and nesting material, they're the source of insect and mite infestation. We need to ensure that we control them so that there's no blockage of gutters, etc., to prevent the defacement of buildings usually from their faeces which is quite corrosive and to prevent damage and soiling of food packaging and in order to control them you need to look at the internal and external factors of the food premises external for example elimination of ledges and perches at the design stage if possible good housekeeping especially in the waste food area the use of thick inert gels or sprung wire systems to prevent perching on ledges all openings proofed including the roof apex, open eaves, louves and ventilation openings using 15mm galvanised chicken wire on nylon netting. The use of scaring devices, loud bangs, flashing lights. The use of traps and there's been some success with pigeons. The use of shooting externally and this must be used with care. Narcotizing using alpha chlorolose. Protected species, however, must be released and you must have a license to do that. A mist netting, where very fine netting is fitted over door openings, etc. Again, any protected species must be released and a license is required. Under integrated pest management, the pest control contractor must be able to cover all types of pests, arrange for 24 hour cover have trained and experienced staff in the food industry, stipulate the methods and materials and the frequency of visits, be a professional body member and that body must be reputable, provide written reports and recommendations and have adequate insurance which you must stipulate should be at least £5 million. Staff and management responsibility Staff and management should be trained to recognise signs. They must report problems to the supervisor and in the pest control book. Advise contractor if there's a problem and it must be quick and accurate. A company contractor. Report poor housekeeping to supervisor. Record bait box positions. Respond to recommendations. A nominated person to check the work has been done. A manager, supervisor, is always responsible for keeping premises pest free. Contractor does not absolve managers of responsibility. And the role of a supervisor in pest management, they have a responsibility to assist in ensuring the provision of a proactive pest control management system. This is part of the due diligence or HACCP. To routinely inspect vulnerable areas for pest infestation, to advise and instruct staff to recognise pests, signs of pests, to ensure thorough checking of all relevant deliveries, i.e. food, packaging and laundry, to notify the authorised pest control contractor and manager if there's evidence of infestation, to ensure the contractor does not expose food to the risk of contamination, so no spraying where open food or food is prepared, Ensure cleaning of food contact services, etc. after spraying. To ensure food and hand contact services are cleaned prior to food handling, sale 
or preparation when there has been a risk of contamination. For example, mice infestation overnight. Cleaning first thing in the morning. To report and act on defects such as broken windows, doors and windows left open and defective tubes on electric fly killers. To accompany contractor after the survey and treatment is completed. To remedy poor housekeeping and maintain high standards of hygiene. To know how to deal with bait and dead bodies. To act on recommendations of contractor. To check or arrange for bait boxes and trash be- to be checked regularly and to be aware of the bait box positions. And with record keeping, ensure all records of visits, actions are maintained and the correct number of visits are undertaken. And here's a couple of pictures of some pest proofing. On the left hand side you've got a fly screen which is fitted on the external part of some Louvre windows. It can also be fitted on the inside of the window and it can be made of a nylon or plastic or a metallic mesh. The middle picture is showing you some secondary plastic doors which automatically open as you walk through or drive a forklift truck through and automatically close behind you. And on the right hand side we've got a door with a metal plate on the bottom which prevents any rodents from gnawing through. That's the end of lecture 11 and integrated pest management. So the key points, pests can spread disease, many prosecutions and closures result from pest problems, there should be adequate staff training to recognise and respond to signs of pests, proofing and good housekeeping prevent many problems, physical controls are preferred to chemical controls, competent contractors are required for chemical control and always monitor the pest control contractor.